so that uh, neither will see themselves as viable candidates for a nuclear family. Not only can they not afford it, um, but they don't seem to be interested in it. A declining population means the end of a nation. For TNT Radio, this is Patrick Henningsen. If you've been told to pull up your socks, then make sure it's a pair of TNT socks. The TNT shop is now open at TNTradio.live. Misty Winston on today's News Talk Radio, TNT. Hey, y'all. Happy Monday. Um, And yes, go to uh, go get you some socks or shirts or whatever else you want. And they have water bottles and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, I actually just got shirts myself. I got uh, one of the Racerback tanks for the gym. I got myself a T-shirt and my husband a T-shirt. And they are, uh, I'm not just saying this, they're really good quality. Shipping was super fast. Definitely go get you some merch. Um, Okay. And also, welcome to another week here at the Misty Winston Show on TNT Radio. Uh, Another amazing week lined up. Make sure you don't miss a minute. Tons of great guests. It's going to be a really great week. Uh, we're going to kick it off with my good friend Reef Breeland here in just a few minutes. But first, I want to direct your attention to a tweet thread from my good friend Caitlin Johnstone. Uh, you can follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Oz. I honestly, I really struggled today with what I should talk about to kick off the show because <laughs> there's so much nonsense going on. Uh, but I really think that this thread calls into sharp relief a really important reality that we all need to come to terms with. Um, okay, so... It kicks off with her quote tweeting a recent Fareed Zakaria video from CNN where he's discussing China. And she says, uh, notice how there's bipartisan support for escalations against Russia with the occasional voice of sanity permitted on the Republican side. And there's bipartisan support for escalations against China with the occasional voice of sanity permitted on the Democrat side. The Democrats furiously promote escalations against Russia with Republicans playing a more passive accepting role and Republicans furiously promote escalations against China with Democrats playing a more passive accepting role. Each carries forward different parts of the agenda. In this way, the empire prevents partisans from arguing about if Cold War escalation should occur and gets them to argue, gets them arguing instead about where they should occur. The debate isn't should we militarize against a powerful country? It's should we militarize against Russia or China? And so that's the whole thread. And I think that this it absolutely nails the reality of our two party system in terms of foreign policy. Um, as I said on Twitter in response to her thread, uh, this is exactly how the game is played. The two parties play off of each other. They uh, to promote the exact same agenda. They create the illusion of conflict to divide us into teams and get us supporting their agenda while allowing us to think that it was our idea. It's classic manipulation. Um, and this is why so much energy is put into division. They want to get you emotionally invested in your team, right? They want you, uh, you know, I'm I'm a Democrat and I'm going to stand by everything the Democrats do or I'm a Republican and I'm going to stand by everything the Republicans do. It's so much easier to manipulate your thinking when you're operating from a position of emotion and not logic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this is exactly how they managed to get everybody. I mean, not everybody, but the people who are invested in the two party shenanigans. That's how they get those people to. Uh, tacitly support their agenda, period, end of story, regardless of which side that you're on. Um, they each play their role publicly in order to manipulate the masses so we're easier to control. Uh, but it honestly, it doesn't matter. I've said many times, on matters of war and Wall Street, we have two parties. That's it. That's all we have. We have two parties. They use everything else to keep us divided and fighting amongst ourselves. Um, They use, again, emotionally driven issues, whether it's abortion or trans issues or the environment or education or anything that they can get you emotionally charged up about. They use those issues um, to keep us fighting ourselves while they are sending all of your money to Wall Street and starting wars all over the country or all over the globe. Um, and that's exactly how this all works out. That's how the two party system is played. Um, there's not two parties. <laughs> that's the reality. They are all owned and operated by the exact same people, the same defense manufacturers, uh, the same defense contractors, the same weapons manufacturers own and operate both sides of the aisle, period. End of story. Now, sure. There's some, um, Tiny variances, like, for example, big oil uh, probably donates slightly more to Republicans than they do to Democrats. They they donate to both, but probably slightly more to Republicans. And big tech donates maybe slightly more to Democrats. They donate to both, but probably just slightly more to Democrats. Uh, But generally speaking, all of these people 
are working towards the same agenda. Um, and it's not your agenda. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with making your life better, our lives better, helping us, helping the people of East Palestine, helping the people of Flint, Michigan, helping the people of any of our communities. It's about uh, enriching their donors. And all of this other stuff is used as a distraction. And it's unfortunate that we keep falling for it. Um, and it's unfortunate that we're now allowing it to uh, potentially launch us into <sighs> World War Three and conflict with not one but two nuclear powers. Uh, you know, that's that's just um, this is how the game is played. And they're very good at it, y'all. Listen, they have people who are very, 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 very evil and very, very, very adept at psychological uh, manipulation and all of that. They've studied this stuff. They know exactly which buttons to push to get you to go along with their agenda. Um, and they're very good at it. And we need to start snapping out of it uh, before it's too late. I mean, again, we're very, very close to uh, really dangerous nuclear situations. Um, it's it's not good and it's only getting worse. Things are only heating up even worse. Um, and the more money we spend on that stuff, the less money we can spend at home improving our own country. So uh, that, I think there was just a great tweet by Kate. Again, she's amazing. Um, she is a lefty, um, but she's amazing. She's very uh, insightful, great writer. Um, and again, you can follow her at Kate Oz on the tweeters. Um, I think she gives a lot of really, really amazing analysis. Um, okay. Another reminder, I have a new Substack. stack. Uh, this is where I'm going to update on guests for the show, post about my appearances elsewhere, keep you in the loop with all of my organizing and acti uh, activism. Um, and I will p potentially occasionally rant there. I don't know yet. We'll see. Um, so you can find that at mistywinson.substack.com. You can also follow me over on the tweeters at Sarcasm Stardust. And while you're at it, why not give TNT Radio a follow? We're on all the major social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Gab, and Getter. Uh, and you can help us get the word out, word out as we cover the big, biggest topics of our time. I can't talk today. On today's news talk, TNT Radio. All talk, all the time. I like the conversation. Today's news talk radio, TNT. Maybe I need to slow down. Maybe that'll help. Uh, I talk too fast. I get it. Uh, okay, so tonight I have my dear friend Reef Breedland here uh, with us, and he's the co-host of INN News, which is an ex exclusive network show, which is on Wednesday nights. Uh, co-host of How Did We Miss That with Indie Left on Sunday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern. And he's the producer and engineer for Tara Reed's newsletter and live stream, which I love Tara Reed. She's a good friend of mine, too. Uh, definitely check out that. Check out INN. They're doing great work. Hey, Reef, how's it going? Misty. Hi, friend. Hi. Um, <laughs> I can't talk tonight. I mean, so if you're going to talk too fast, how are the people going to deal with me? You know, like, <laughs> they're, they're used to me um, talking too fast. <laughs> I think people well, are used to that know. at this point. Oh, it, it, so you, it you were saying we, we're, we're fucked in the rant earlier. Um, yes. Well, yes. I mean, you know. belief, let's just be honest about this. That's exactly how, and that's a great th thread from Kate. I mean, as to be expected from Kate. Um, Fantastic. But it's, she really does a great job of putting complex uh, ideas like that into a very easy to digest um, and uncomplicated yeah, we, way. Like, she's so good. She's so talented. We covered her, um, her doing her little painting of, of Julian Assange out of her purse. That was great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't get to hear her voice a lot. And her words are always lovely to hear. Um, yes. But yeah, you know, if you could just get free already, that would be nice. Um, yeah, that know. would be. <laughs> I, I would but, really like a break. <laughs> you know, that would be cool. Reef. I would definitely take a break if that were to happen. Um, yeah. Uh, she's been a longtime Julian Assange supporter. Uh, uh, she does a great job of covering this, the whole, all of the shenanigans. Um, and again, yeah. from a, a very insightful perspective, she's really good at dissecting these kinds of things. I once, um, I sent her a message one time because I forget what I was working on, but I needed like a, oh, it might've been for TNT actually. I might've been doing like one of those quick, like, you know, minute long, like news briefs or whatever. And I, I needed to like right. condense the Assange case down into like a really short form. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I gotta, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach out to Kate. She's really good with words. And I was like, Kate, I don't know yeah. how, this is so complex. I don't know how to break it down into like this tiny little segment. And she's like, it's not complicated. And you know that <laughs> she like called me out. She's like, yeah. this this is about a journalist being imprisoned for doing journalism. It is that simple. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but she's yep. good at that. She's really good. Pretty at, much. Yeah. I mean, people are too distracted, simple. Misty. It's yes. hard for them to focus on the things we need to focus on. You know, like right now we have to worry about what aura a presidential candidate is going to have again. <laughs> um, 
you know, and like among many other problems we have, you know. Oh, like, goodness. I mean, listen, did I you mean, see N Nina Turner's tweet? Uh, KJP I'm, at a at a briefing made a joke about Marianne Williamson. Yeah, and Nina Turner yeah, even put they're out a making tweet. the jokes. Yes, well, and then Nina Turner put out a tweet saying this is below the office of the presidency. No, it's not. This no, is the office not. that is responsible for genocide and murder and war crimes yeah. and rape and torture. Really, a joke is beneath the president. Right. No, it's not. Silence. That's ridiculous. Like, how are they? They're literally tone policing the presidency. <laughs> like, like they're going to make it on a debate stage after that? Like, yeah, what? We've only been How brutalizing you... Yemen for the past eight years and we're uh, aiding Ugh. in the destruction of Syria and Israel and, uh, yeah. you know, Venezuela and oh, she Somalia. Supports them. She what supports them, the one we're talking about. You Who? know, what? So, Who supports what? What? Who? Marianne <laughs> is uh, oh. Isra Israeli ties, right? Yeah, she's a Zionist. Um, Garbage. That's it. That's Garbage. the Garbage. Um, I don't even want to give her airtime, Reef. It's not even worthy of airtime. I feel you. She's I such mean, a, I'd much I mean, rather talk about, you know, East Palestine is still poisoned. Yeah, um, can we talk about that? Yeah, can we? go ahead. Okay. Because yeah. this... Uh, <sighs> I'm so angry, dude. Um, as I covered I last week, you. there was a the, I'm 180 miles from this thing. Uh, and then there was another train derailment one. in yeah. Springfield, which is about an hour to my south. I have friends that live there. Uh, luckily, as they're so they're saying there were no toxic chemicals spilled. But they're first they said there were no toxic chemicals on the train. That's a lie. There were. It just happened that none of the cars that actually overturned. Uh, had any talks so they say i don't believe a word that they say but that's what they're saying so far but this is the second mm. norfolk southern in ohio in the past month it was like a month and one yes. day um east palestine still doesn't have answers they're still they still haven't been evacuated um they had a yeah. town hall and the ceo of norfolk southern couldn't even be bothered to show up his name's alan shaw uh hit him up tell him you think he's a chud because <laughs> he is um <laughs> I mean, it's disgusting, dude. These are uh, these people; their oh, lives no. have been completely destroyed. I mean, I, seriously. Pete Buttigieg was just like nicer questions asked, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. what are you gonna do? Um, yeah. No, I mean, this is among many. Uh, we know why this is happening. This is capitalism at work. You know, why spend money on infrastructure when you can spend it on missiles? Um, right. You know, this is a classic. Like, how many we? we Food shortages are happening across the country. People still can't yes. get formula for the children. People yes. still can't get lots of things. Uh, Misty, you have children that have particular dietary needs at like, yes. you know, they only like certain foods. And if you can't find those foods, it's you, things are not going to go well. It's a nightmare. So, there is, there's been more than one and, occasion where we have had to go to four, five, six different stores trying to find the uh, right brand of chicken nuggets. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, like she's I very particular. You. Yeah. God it's not bless easy. you. Um, <laughs> but like wa water is an issue everywhere now. Yes. You know, I mean, my father works in an industry where he gets to go under just about every bridge in the country. They're not doing well. Like, no. you know, so. No. You know, you're you're talking about what's going to be the next disaster. We're only waiting, you know. Yes. So we're in a perpetual state of just waiting for the next uh, disaster. And that's ridiculous. Yep. And meanwhile, we're sending gazillions of dollars to one of the most corrupt co countries on Earth to fight a proxy war yep. with Russia. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And we're doing it while arming and funding Nazis. I mean, their, their somebody, trains please. don't derail. Have you noticed? Like <laughs> that's true. That's you know, true. like yeah. a China too. We're gonna talk about their infrastructure doing better than us, dude. You way know? better. Way better. Way way, way better. better. Like whatever you think of China, they are crushing us on infrastructure. Their high speed rail is second mm -hmm. to none. It's not even close. Why do you think close. the global South wants their help as yes. opposed to ours? We send military bases. They send yeah. like bridges. You actual know? aid so right <laughs> yeah like so you know yeah, i mean bad. maybe 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 they can help east palestine i don't know 
you know i mean um, i'm sure that they would if we would let if we would never let that happen um obviously yeah. we wouldn't even let people help the country of syria following a major earthquake <laughs> you know what i'm saying right and we just had all the progressives yeah. vote to continue the sanctions on a country that how much just do you experienced think a the name monumental of the city huh is how much do you think the name of the city affects its like a visibility right now the fact that it's literally called east palestine I think, oh, that I think that's some of it on the algorithm. Yeah, I think that that's you some know? of it. I also think that it's really difficult to get Democrats to speak on it, considering that they were the ones that just uh, it's their broke fault. up the strike. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. not a good look. That's not a good look for them. Yeah. It's and it very was awkward. Obama who removed the sanctions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not a good look for them so, and they know it. And that's why nope. Little Miss Green New Deal doesn't have a word to say about the fact that there was just a major environmental mm -hmm. disaster in Ohio. Hasn't said a word. Yeah, where is Greta? Not one word. Where no, is I'm not Greta? talking about Greta. Where, no, I'm, where's not talking, that I'm talking about at, AOC. Too. I'm talking about AOC. It's the same difference, you know? Yeah, pretty much. Um, that's true. Pretty much. But yeah, she's over. Greta's out there getting fake arrested again you know <laughs> yeah. so, so ridiculous like such a charade you know it's really how absurd dare you. <laughs> how dare you <laughs> oh i love that okay we have to take a break let's come back and make fun of some more people in just a couple minutes right here on tnt radio TNT Radio's Dirk Coleman. What I did, for example, uh, I sent it to my father, who was uh, not very favorable of Russia, and I sent him some of the Putin speeches that you had translated, and then I asked him um, what he thought about it, and he said, the man is reasonable, completely reasonable, and that is really what happens sometimes. That was one of the things I always wondered, does Putin write these intellectually very interesting speeches himself, or does, uh, do, does he have speechwriters like it's usual in the West. Um, Putin several times a year is uh, going on, on public discussions on, on events yes. and there he is for three, four hours live and uh, sometimes even with Western journalists who try to grill him as we call it in Germany. It's it's very, very fascinating that he has a very wide knowledge. So uh, I don't think he's writing his speeches really well, but uh, really himself. But maybe um, he's taking part in it because uh, when you see what he is um, saying when he's talking free on, on, on a, on a on the podium, being with a journalist or with several journalists for, for four hours uh, without any papers or whatever, um, you see that uh, the, the speeches he is reading and, and, and the things he's saying in discussions is, well, it's, it's quite the same. So either he has good speechwriters who know him or he is doing it himself with them. The Dirk Pullman Show on today's News Talk, TNT Radio. Let's take advantage of the freedoms that we have while we have them to advance the kingdom's objective to be salt and light. Freedom is hard. Election, election security involves you, involves the voters. This election for people of faith is vital that we see a change because the war against Christians is at an all time high. Transparency is the key not only to having um, honest elections, but to maintaining public trust in those elections. Our ability to vote is not being um, withheld from us. No one's trying to stop you from voting. The one place the American people can have a say is at the ballot box. That's why the Democrats and, and the far left are working so hard to get rid of all election integrity. We cannot let our elections be uh, anything but transparent. Uh, it is at the very heart of freedom in a free society. And if we lose America, I mean, it's, it's all over because the world has looked to America for hope. Free and fair at SalemNow.com. Well, I want to say this, and I'm going to say it just once. This is today's News Talk Radio, TNT. This is TNT Radio, and you're listening to The Misty Winston Show. I'm joined by my good friend, Reef Breeland. I like talking to Reef because we can make fun of people and laugh um, and just rant about stuff that annoys us because you need to do that every once in a while. It's good for your mental health. Um, so we were just talking about yeah. Israel and Syria, and I just wanted to bring up Vanessa Bealy, who's a good friend of mine, um, an amazing mm -hmm. independent reporter who's uh, based in Syria. Uh, she tweeted out a couple hours ago that Aleppo Airport is reported to have been attacked by Israel. This is the lifeline for victims of the earthquake. Israel is trying to provoke 
Syria to escalate conflict in lockstep with the U.S., triggering ISIS attacks on civilians, U.S. Israel terrorist settler states. So, yeah, here we have Israel attacking the major airport in Syria uh, following a major natural disaster that has devastated the whole country. Um, <laughs> and that's our ally, yep. Israel. That's mm-hmm. our ally. It's nice. It's Vanessa's work on the, the white helmets is amazing. Um, <laughs> he's been calling that out, which is uh, I love her for. Um, yes, the white helmets are a joke. But yeah, I mean they are. Ugh. I mean they are they are Al Qaeda tied. No. Um, yeah, and I mean it's like I a whole correctly? psyop. Yeah, it's really just a psyop. Yeah. It's really it, they're not even. I mean, they manufacture videos. They invent these videos where it looks as if they're going to like rescue people, and they're not. It's it's like Hollywood. I don't even know right. what it is. Um, it's yeah. really terrible, and they have really really nefarious funding and backing. Uh, and uh, mm-hmm. Vanessa has been done been doing uh, an unbelievable job, uh, d- uh, like really just completely exposing them for years now. So definitely check out Vanessa and her work. She's indispensable. Yeah. I love her. I did want to ask yeah. you um, what you would like to see happen in Ohio right now. You know. Okay. Um, well, first of all, they need to get the people out of there. Period. End of story. And not just within. They want to do like a mile uh, within. No, right. that's not good enough. People are experiencing symptoms of this thing miles and miles and miles away. I know that it's not feasible to relocate everyone, but anybody who wants to relocate, they need Norfolk Southern needs to take care of that. Period. End of discussion. Um, second of all, the CEO of Norfolk Southern needs to show up to these town halls and he needs to answer their questions. And he he needs to do so with absolute honesty and full transparency. They deserve that. That's like the least that he can do for these people. Um, sec- and then they also need to be completely and they say that they're going to be completely responsible for the cleanup effort and all of that stuff. I'll believe that when I see it. There needs to be unbelievable accountability there. And then we need to completely restructure the rail system. All of these, because mm-hmm. this has been going on. I talked about this earlier. I was on um, uh, Fault Lines earlier, and we were talking about this. And this is not like an overnight. This didn't happen overnight. This is um, you know, a very long time, years and years and years and years of these rail companies systematically chipping away at regulations and getting things taken yep. off so that they can put profit above everything else um, in terms of inspections and safety and all of that stuff. They've been systematically chipping away at that and we need to completely start from scratch and there needs to be unbelievable regulations put on these companies. Um, there needs to be really incredible penalties um, if they uh, if something like this happens um, and they're found to be uh, negligent or irresponsible as is the case here. Um, there's no excuse for this reef. There's no excuse for this. There's really not. Yep. So that's like a good start. I would be happy with that. Isn't that's a good start. Norfolk so- Southern, the same company that also had problems with that drill rig that got caught on fire in the ocean or am I wrong? No, that was something about that. Okay. No, I think that was, there was one that, that was got BP. like, it was a little just, unless there was another the one. Ocean, but, oh, there, well, I mean, there may have know, been another I mean, one. <laughs> I mean, here in Florida, train derailments, uh, Texas train derail. I mean, pick a state, South we have Carolina infrastructure everywhere. Right. Yeah. South yep. Carolina, Michigan. Um, There's been a ton of trail train derailments over the past few months. Um, it's insane. And go ahead but again. Th- and go ahead and look th- up every like chemical disaster in the country. And I guarantee yes. you, you will find a company not willing to pay for something uh, that was required because they yeah. wanted profit. You know, yes. every time. Well, so, the way that we structure it is that, that it's so much easier for these companies to just create like a, a, a kind of like a, 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 a oopsie fund because it's, they're going to get like mm-hmm. a tiny slap on the wrist. Like Pete Buttigieg said, like yeah. the most we can find them is $250,000. That's nothing to them. They make billions of dollars. So, yeah, and we'll just have this little fund over here. Goat. Yeah, we'll just have this fund over here so that when we inevitably poison an entire region, we'll just pay the measly little fee and go about business as usual. And that's ridiculous. Yeah. It's Yep. I hate this country. <laughs> I really do sometimes. Yeah, we I mean, I don't hate still the people. make fun of Chernobyl. You know. Right? Yeah. So but I mean, I don't think yeah, it, I mean, the, the comparisons to Chernobyl I think were a little bit overly dramatic. I mean, Chernobyl was next level right like that's you can't you still can't go there ended the world yeah yeah like you still Um, can't step foot in there without like a whole hazmat suit and then you can still only stay for like an hour and that's it you got to get out um so that's i mean the the comparisons to chernobyl were a little bit overly dramatic but it is 
really bad in East Palestine right now. Like it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's it makes me angry. I mean, there was a guy at the town hall on Thursday that said that mm. he was outside and he touched something on his property and his skin literally came off. <laughs> That's my, what my, people are dealing my with. father does my father moves these kind of chemicals frequently in tonnages that a trail wish they could move a train. Right. And like the 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 amount of safety precautions that those like crew members have to go through to even transport the stuff is incredible. You're talking yeah. about hours of stuff they have to learn, you know, um, like it's bad, you know, <laughs> like it's ugh. that that specific thing altogether. The what, what's it called? What's the um, vinyl chloride? That's it. They're talking about yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no. And that's the way it should be. And- that's the way it should yeah, be. That's not the absolutely. way the rail companies do it. There's very little training. There's no. very little safety. There's very little regulations. The They don't have to do the inspections. They've like trimmed it down. It used to be, I think, um, uh, 90 seconds per car or something. They shave that down. Like it's, it's a joke. Like it's an absolute joke yeah. what they are able to get away with in the rail companies right now. And I realize it's not just the rail companies. Like there are different, yep. you know, industries all over the place that are doing horrendous things for the almighty dollar. Um, but this is, I mean, this is no joke and this is happening over and over and over again in communities across the country. I mean, like we just said, Michigan, South Carolina, Texas, Florida, Ohio, like this is happening over and over and over again. And East Palestine is not going to be the last one. Like there's going to be an issue in, in communities all over the place. Um, if we allow this to continue and unfortunately we're probably going to allow it to continue, which sucks. Um, yeah. okay. We have to take a quick break to get some headlines, but hang tight. We're going to be right back right here on TNT radio. And now, dude, I have huge news. I knew it. TNT Radio News. Matt Boylan here with a look at your TNT headlines. A court in the US has come under fire for overturning a ban on transgender athletes and forcing America's National Powerlifting Association to allow biological men to compete against women. A fire has torn through the world's largest refugee camp, leaving some 12,000 people without shelter. And Japan's warned the country will cease to exist if people don't start having more children as the nation's birth rate continues to plummet. Don't miss a thing. Be sure to download the TNT radio app from either the Apple App Store or Google Play so you can easily listen live to us anywhere, anytime. Available right now to download. Keeping you up to speed on TNT radio. All right. We are back here on the Misty Winston Show. I'm joined by Reef Breland, who's my friend. Um, and we're just ranting a little bit. We're having a little bit of a rant session. There's a lot of shenanigans going on right now. I feel like it's, I mean, listen, we are always getting bombarded, but I feel like the past month or so, it's been really ridiculous. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. It's like, <clears throat> holy cow. And I realize, that, Reef, are you ready for this? Brace yourself because mm-hmm. election season is coming. So it's only going to get worse. Uh, yep. I know. <laughs> That's what I was going to tell you. Like, yeah. I mean, not to mention we've had a lot to cover up recently, you know, yeah. I mean, don't, yes. don't Google who, who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, especially <laughs> if you're German, don't do that. Right. Um, right. So, I mean, w- which war slash terrible thing do you want the country to lie about? Like, you know, so well, all of them, yeah. they're going to lie about yes, all of that's them. That's what's happening. Yeah, um, that's, I mean, that's what they always do. That's our foreign policy yeah. is lie to our own people. Like, that's part of it is to lie to our own people. That's, yep. that's just common practice. It's so annoying. And election season, like, I'm not ready for it, Reef. Like, we're already starting to see, as we said, like, Marianne Williamson announced, oh, so stupid. Um, but, you know, uh-huh. uh, Mike Pompeo, Mike Pompeo is going to run, y'all. Can I just tell you, Mike yep. Pompeo is such a scumbag. He went to CPAC recently and talked about, uh, conservative values and how conservatives need to stand for their values so that we can, they can take back. The, this is the guy who on stage bragged about lying and cheating and stealing at the CIA. Are yeah. those your values, homie? Like, really? Those yeah. are conservatives out there. I know that there are conservatives that listen to TNT. Um, is, are, mm-hmm. is, is that your values? That's, that, that's the guy that represents your values. <laughs> this is the guy that mm, plotted nope. to murder Julian Assange because he told the truth about the CIA. That's your guy. Come on. He is a raging psychopath, Reef. Oh, yep. Been that way for a minute, so hasn't he? Gross. Forever. Um, He's always been. Yeah, but 
some some Americans are easily duped by empty rhetoric and platitudes mm -hmm. uh, on both sides of the aisle. So, yes, you know, everyone's searching for hopium and they all know there's problems. Not a lot of them can figure out why there's problems. And, uh, you know, the gears of the machine keep turning, you know? Yes. So Well, that's because, like I, I, I said at the top of the show, they distract us yeah. with all of the other stuff. Yep. They keep us emotionally invested in, uh, like, stuff that doesn't really matter or stuff that matters, but, like, it's not a bigger picture. It's really, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's not something we should be focused on. Um, and right. they uh, manage to manipulate us that way. And it's so frustrating. Like, people are still buying into Trump, Reef. Still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yep. oh but he's anti-war yep. trump is not anti-war stop that oh my goodness no. come on no but the democrats yeah, the guy that dropped the, the mother of all bombs him is anti-war what they give them this they, they they it's like an easy pitch to trump like yeah you know trump now gets to be an anti-war candidate and a like outsider it's like they give him the easiest route to the presidency and then wonder what happens you yeah. know it's yes. but like sad, honestly. Well, because again, you know? that's the game. That's that's intentional. Yes. Like they're working yep. together to do that. The Trump, the mm -hmm. Democrats don't hate Trump. They do not. The deep state doesn't hate no. Trump at all. Like that's the show they put on for you. But that is not the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. He is part of it. He is one hundred. Y'all, he's a billion. Like he's a businessman. He said on the debate stage, "I bought you. I bought you. I bought you." He's in on it. Like he is He's part of the machine. Again. He always has been. And he, you and let him say, play the outsider. As a Floridian, Ugh. people think that DeSantis is somehow no. going to beat that. And no, let me tell you right now, no. Like, well, I mean, he you're could. not going to like me. He could but, beat him, but yeah, I don't see that happening. Yeah, on a put, put both of those people in the same room and Trump is going to steal the show. Like, For sure. You For know, sure. DeSantis is another Jeb Bush. He's another, like, they can pretend he's something different, but he still supports Israel, still supports all sorts censorship. of terrible things. Yes. Yeah, he's hardcore like, on the censorship, y'all. Mm -hmm. Hardcore. So he's bad. He just, what, what, he's, he's going to have bloggers uh, s send their, you know. They have to register. to him. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, while also taking books because they have uh, something that you might not want your kid to read. I'm going to tell you, there's going right. to be a lot of books you might not want your kid to read. You know? Yeah. I so, will never support a book banner ever, 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 yeah. ever, ever. It's not okay. Yeah. Censorship is not okay. Listen, some books don't belong in elementary schools. Like, I, I'll agree with that. Like, sure. um, you know, pornographic yep. books and things like that. Like, that argument I totally agree with. A lot but of the, religious the idea ones. that you yeah like yeah well, yes but the idea like oh yeah. this this book talks about race or racism we can we can't right. let our kids that's our history you should let your kids read about that yep. it's okay like it's all right yep. they, they should know about that it's okay it's so right. ridiculous but yeah desantis like, is uh, he's a different level of scary because he's um he's more yeah. controlled he'd be more effective yeah yes you he know. is much more controlled. He's so, more refined. He knows how to like the best thing about yeah. Trump is that he has no gift for subtlety. He does not know when to shut up. And occasionally that leads to We're him telling the, the truth. Oil. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get gonna the steal oil. Their oil. Going to be great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you that's know. the best thing about him is he rips the mask off because he has no idea when he needs yep. to shut up. <laughs> that's great. Yep. But DeSantis knows I mean, the he's game. Been, he's been talking about these Ukraine stuff even. They've let him take that lane as well where mm -hmm. like you know i i didn't go to Dude, war they gave him east palestine reef i know they gave him, him east it. palestine they I'm let surprised he Donald didn't jump Tr shot paper towels to you guys like he did in puerto rico <laughs> at least that would have been funny <laughs> he did you know? bring trump water he did bring trump water and so hats. that's you know at least yeah, he could have brought trump steaks you know? Right. He could have brought um, a bunch of stuff. I mean, he could have, yeah. you know, he could be offering continued help to those people. He could be, um, yep. you know, funding their uh, evacuation and all of that stuff. Uh, he's not going to do that, of course. But um, they let him mm -hmm. have that win that that uh, again, it's just optics like it, him showing up yeah. there or Biden showing up there really makes no difference whatsoever. But optically, no. Nope. Uh, and he, I mean, that's two swing states, Pennsylvania and Ohio, that the Democrats literally just handed to him on a silver platter or a gold platter, I guess, because it's Trump. Yep. 
Oh, mm-hmm. so dumb. I have to right, think it's intentional, dude. But we could also dude. push Biden left somehow. You know, I don't know if you know, <laughs> but we could push him left. Um, oh, God. You know. It's been three years. I mean, How's that going? <laughs> We've also we're we're so desperate for a leader. People are willing to try to force a pothead comedian to run for office, even oh my though God. he said his wife said no. Misty, if your husband was talking to someone and your husband said, "My wife said no," do you know what that means? That means that no. means no. That means that no. means no. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's like, a hard no. Yeah, make the hint, and the idea man. that you would then publicly. Um, Try to get people pressure, to badger yeah. them and pressure them. Yeah, yeah. it's is, just like, what are you doing, dude? <sighs> that's like, not a good come look. on, man. No, but that's like, not that a people, good look. And people eat it up because they need a hero, they need a leader, and uh, you know, yeah. I can't blame them for wanting one. But I mean, I think yeah. I think it's depressing to say what we need to do is like, don't engage, don't like batten down the hatches, protect yourself and who you can yes. protect, yes. and like yes. Yes. Try to manage. Okay, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about this more in depth. We need to talk about this more in depth. I I don't want to talk too much about Jimmy because he's a friend of mine, and Mm -hmm. I don't want to love the guy. um, Absolutely, I don't want to uh, betray his confidence. You know what I mean? So I don't want to talk specifically about him. But let's talk about what you just said in terms of what we like moving forward and the reality of what is actually what we need to be doing. Uh, We do have to take another quick break, though. So um, hang tight. We're going to get back into this as soon as we come back. Just a couple minutes right here on TNT Radio. With his expert analysis and opinion, this is TNT Radio's Timothy Shea. Sometimes it's the crime, but usually it's the cover-up that trips them up. And so too with the scamdemic. Between the emails coming out of Great Britain showing the UK government in collusion with the media to gin up fear and even go so far as to release a variant in order to scare people into turning themselves into genetically modified organisms to revelations that Anthony Fauci funded a study, quote unquote, to cover up the true origins of the virus, which of course was the Wuhan Institute of Virology as a result of -of gain-of-function research conducted by EcoHealth Alliance, funded directly by Anthony Fauci's NIAID. None of this will matter, however, unless the genocidal maniacs behind all these hundreds of thousands of needless deaths are sent to prison for the rest of their lives. From MAGAinstitute.com, this is Timothy Shea for TNT Radio. Challenging the consensus and debunking the narrative, this is Viewpoint. The Caesar Rodney Election Research Institute, C-R-E-R-I, investigated Zuckerberg's favored non-profits, the Center for Technology and Civic Life, CTCL, and the Center for Election Innovation and Research, CEIR, and found nearly 99% of CTCL grants of $1 million or more in the battleground states of Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Virginia went to cities and counties which Biden was certified as winning. In some places, the funds gave Democrat-leaning areas a more than 10 to 1 advantage in election resources. A grant program for five Wisconsin cities allowed these Democrat strongholds to spend roughly $47 per voter, compared to $4 to $7 per voter in traditionally Republican areas of the state, the Amistad Project and Election Watchdog revealed. Analysis by other groups like Influence Watch and the Foundation for Government Accountability found similar discrepancies. The conversation continues. Our public education system, which I am now renaming our public miseducation system. On today's News Talk Radio, TNT. All right. This is the Misty Winston show right here on TNT Radio. And I'm joined by Reef Reeland. Um, so before the break, we were talking about how there's this um, still there's this weird need for people that they need some hero that they think one person is going to save us and that they, we've got to have this leader that can hold us up and, you know, push us through to defeating the empire. And that's just not going to happen either. Everybody's going to rise up and we're going to take back our country um, or we need to just prepare as best as we can 
and brace mm-hmm. for impact because the empire is going to fall. It is already in failure. I think honestly, we're well past the point of no return. I don't think there is a writing of this ship at this point. Um, so, but let's start with the fact that people think that they need like some hero. What is that dude? Like what? I don't understand it. I've never been that person who has needed like a, somebody to put on a pedestal to save me. Why? I don't understand. I do not reef. I think, because they don't realize the power they have as individuals, right? Like yeah. they, they feel like they're not powerful enough to deal with the problem. So someone else is going to have to do it. The problem is ain't nobody else going to do it, you know? So no. for me, it's kind of like, and we've said this about organizing on Ion and News specifically, you know, my co-host Care Bear, uh, Colin Radix Carter, um, talks about it frequently, pulls up Kwame Ture. Lots of old leaders that have had this problem before. Um, you know, it's it's like you're not going to beat Thanos with just like Batman, you know, right. You, you need like a whole team together and we're going to need multiple leaders if we're going to do this that are tr- trustworthy, that can't be manipulated, controlled, like you kind of got to lock it down, you know, and yeah. I don't see that right now from the left specifically. Um, or the right um, yeah right you have to be able to organize with what you're for and stick to your guns on that and not just what you're against like that's difficult for people to realize you know this is not going to be an easy road it never has been winning some electoral race does nothing for you generally you know even at the local levels that's difficult like you know it's better. You have a better shot at things, but that's equally manipulated and controlled, just like nationals. You yes. Know. I mean, it depends so. on where you live. Some places are worse than others. Um, locally, yeah. like mine's uh, pretty bad. Like, I mean, it, Ohio's I pretty the terrible best thing, across the board. Um, things like what Rome does, that you can have direct, like, meaning to the people around you, right? Building yeah. libraries, building... You know, getting them food and formula and diapers and water and, uh, you know, uh, keeping people afloat the way, uh, you know, like sharing that Southern hospitality around, you know, is. Well, I think that that's the thing is that people need to start coming back together. They've done a really good job of trying to isolate us um, uh, and trying to keep us away from each other and trying to keep us um, in our own little echo chambers and all of that stuff. And I think that uh, in particular with East Palestine, we've started, I mean, we've seen that uh, uh, John Russell uh, does a great job of uh, covering this kind of stuff because he's from that area. He's a bartender in like a dive bar. Um, And I Mm -hmm. I talked about this the other day um, on the show where there was, I think, an older couple, their house burnt down. And the community, which is like a right wing Trump voting tiny little town in Ohio, uh, immediately came together and they had a fundraiser at the bar and some like, you know, like biker guy cut his hair off and like they do, like everybody like pitched in to donate like they did. a fun- I mean, it was like a whole yeah. thing. And that's that is that's it, it, they didn't call it leftism. They didn't call it um, it, mutual aid yeah, or collective that's action. That's what it is. Real commie thing to do. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. Um, I mean, yeah, that's, but, but that's, that, that, that's, it, I don't even want to call it commie. That's just taking care yeah. of each other. That's just being a neighbor, being a yep. friend. Um, I mean, it's not even really just communist. That's human. That's a human thing. Yep. When people are hurting, we want to help each other. And that's just yeah. human nature. And we need to get back to that. We need to reinvigorate that. Um, you know, help your that community. about ourselves. Yes. Help your family. You know. Yes. Help your neighborhood. Help your interns, schools. Help be your. Able to help others. Yes. But, and that's what I keep telling people. Like, whatever you can do, because listen, like I said, we're gonna like it's gonna collapse. We're very. It's close now. Like it's we are in free fall. Um, and it's only mm-hmm. going to continue to get worse. People need to come to that, re- like come to grips with it. That's what's going to happen. But there's everybody can do something like you can learn to grow food. You can learn to build things or fix things. You can learn how to can food. You can learn how to sew. You can learn how to cook. You can learn how to, uh, you know, basic um, uh, medical like first aid practices. Yep. Um, every, you can collect things like I have been trying to collect welding. Yeah. All those machining, skills. welding. 
-hmm. Yeah, all of that stuff. I've been trying to like collect medical supplies and food and water and blankets and batteries and flashlights and matches and all of that stuff, like stuff that we're going to need when the stuff hits the van. I'm, uh, so I'm everybody just trying to can get into Joe something. Rogan's fallout shelter. That's my goal. Right. You know? If I like, he, I think he'll be all right. So just make friends yeah. with him. You know, dude, um, if I could make friends with Joe Rogan, I would have done that already because then I could get on there to talk about you. Uh, Julian Assange. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm well, still you know. trying to get him to do like a whole show on Julian Assange or like talk to somebody from nice, the family or that'd be great. That would be, I mean, dude, It'll get happen. so many viewers. <sighs> Come Maybe on, Joe. He's, that. I, he, he's a Russell supporter. Brand like probably he's probably told him. Yeah, Russell Brand's yeah. done a good job. I would love, like, come on. He's friends with Jimmy. Like, Jimmy is uh, like, come on. Come on, Joe. Do it. Yeah. You can talk to, Pull like, Gabriel and John Shipton or Stella or both. Or you could talk to, I mean, have Roger Waters back on and ask him about it. Or uh, John Pilger or sure. Craig Murray. Or, I mean, there's so many people that you could talk to um, and yep. really Stella. get a lot of eyes and ears. Yeah, Stella would be great. Yeah. I don't know though. Stella's, um, I don't know. That might be difficult because he's kind of you. like that would be, she's very like quiet and serious, which is, mm. you know, she has to be, but I don't know. That might be a little awkward. I think Roger Waters would be good. I'm a little yeah. upset that they didn't talk about it more the last time he was on. That would have been yeah. awesome. I mean, they talked about like everything else, right? You they know, did talk about it for like a ton of flack. Yeah. Well, they talked about like the, coverage the and very end for like three minutes. I was a little disappointed, yeah. but it's all right. Yeah, I guess you should have Maybe you on. Time. Hurry up, Joe. It doesn't Maybe have to be me. On. I don't care. Like I'm not. Yes, it it's, does. It really doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really doesn't. Yeah. I'm constantly trying to get out humility, of appearances. I'm yeah, trying I'll, to like. Nope. Not allowed. <laughs> nope. Chrissy Mayer. I just. I was um, just on Chrissy Mayer's show last week, and uh, when Frank yeah, reached funny. out to She's me. Funny, right? She's hilarious. Uh, but when they reached out to me to do the show, I was like, yeah, I mean, I'll come on, but I could also get you somebody cooler. <laughs> yeah, I, I say I'm that to like everybody. That. Like, there's, a, there's smarter yeah. people. Like, yeah. Go find the smart people. I'm not one of those. Yeah. I'm like, no. you know, I'm a pothead comedian. Like, what do you need me for? You know? Well, the only reason people but, ask me to do it is because I'm extraordinarily loud about my activism. Um, yes. And so people, well, you've like, been doing I'm it for ever, unfortunately. <laughs> You yeah. know, <laughs> I'm over it. I'm really like, over it. <laughs> you thought, oh yeah, in and out, couple of months, we'll get them out of here. You know, Dude, when we like, started, when we started Action for Assange, not even joking, Andrew thought six months. <laughs> oh, bless uh, him. it's not been six months. <laughs> no, it's been a little longer. No, it's been a little longer than that. Yeah, um, not good. Oh, uh, you know, ballpark. He was well, close. <laughs> yeah. <you know. sighs> You know, it's I'm not been six for months my checks to get here. Right. You know, it's been a yes. while. Like, yes. So but, I don't know. I yeah. Maybe they got lost in the mail. You know, the postal probably. service is not what it used to be. That's probably it. No. So, no. you know, it's what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. There's just so much going on right now, too, that I'm thoroughly exhausted. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I yep. feel like um, it hit me really hard today. Uh, I, I think seriously, because like the Mike Pompeo stuff came up on my Twitter feed and then the Nina Turner stuff and the Marianne Williams, M Williamson stuff and the East Palestine stuff and the Springfield train derailment and like, Ukraine still going on ah. and Taiwan's <laughs> a hot mess and Syria is yeah. uh, being bombed again. And it's like, what is it? Oh, it's nonstop. I, there's Empires like no, don't die quietly. No, that's true. So, that's you very, know, very true. I wish that wasn't happening. I wish there was a way out of it, but I don't see it. Ro Rome had better even. roads than us, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, if you know anything about history and you've examined it all the, the way that empires fail, we are textbook. <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like we are overextending ourselves yep. militarily. We're not taking care of people at home. We're doing all of the wrong things. And I'm not, yep. I mean, I'm not entirely convinced that it's not controlled demolition. Um, and that it's an yep. intentional disruption I mean, of, you know, they want to restructure society and a good way to do it is to, uh, you know, destroy the world's largest the, empire and build it back elsewhere. New world order. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, listen, there's, there's something know, to all that stuff. That's, <laughs> I know I, that's, that's you know? the problem, you know? Yeah. It's not, my, it's not our fault. They literally call themselves like the world economic, like they literally call themselves those things, 
the new world order. That was their phrasing. It's now the WEF, the Center for Inclusive Capitalism. You know, yeah. you name it. They want the us great to, reset. They literally talked. Yes. Yep. Those are real <laughs> things. We're not yeah, just those are real. We're things. not just making them up. <laughs> you know, it still makes I me laugh when were. people say that that's a conspiracy theory. There's a literal book. He mm -hmm. wrote a literal book outlining like his there. plans. It's not yep. a conspiracy theory. It's a literal he, that I mean, you could argue whether or not they have as much power as some people think they do. And well, I mean, it's pretty. Uh, I don't it's know. There. That, you can see it. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah, for sure. You know, yes. So, <sighs> and now you have and Bill Gates like in charge of all special. the farmland. It's not. I think that's the part of the part of it that tricks people up. It's not some secret super cabal. It's not like the literal Illuminati. It's the people with one eat money want to keep more money. Like, yes. It's sure. not any more magic than that. Like, no. yes, they, they, they like some interesting seances, but <laughs> mostly it's money. <laughs> you know? There's like the mostly. occasional child sacrifice, but mostly it's money. You know? It's fine. Mainly money. Um, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, no. But, and, but I will say that it is true that it's not like Klaus Schwab is really just um, a front man. Like he is yep. uh, the named and known guy. Uh, but there are a mm -hmm. lot of guys behind the scenes that are not ever talked about that. Most people don't know their names uh, that are very shadowy nope. figures that work behind the scenes. And those people are much more nefarious than Klaus Schwab will ever be. He is really just the front yeah. man. I mean, he's kind of like the president, like the president is the front man for the empire. Um, mm -hmm. He really has no power or authority. I mean, come on. Do you think Joe Biden's making any decisions? Absolutely not. <laughs> Yeah. absolutely joe biden isn't picking out his tie in the morning you know what i'm saying like he makes no decisions yeah. he is completely feeble brain Look, he has no no <laughs> i mean he is definitely uh, maybe we just have to respect decisions. their call for cthulhu you know <laughs> if we just join them now we won't be fish right? people right um, but I mean, listen yeah it's, they could ugh. they could buy me out come on come on give me I, some money and i'll I'm still waiting for it <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's just kind of wild that like that kind of stuff and that whole Alex Jones thing he's allowed to be right on that you know he gets well, the I other half of it wrong and almost discredits it yes yeah yeah he's controlled exactly sure. you know he, that's the whole point of him but, and I think that's a lot to do with like the Marjorie Taylor Green thing um, yes I think she is controlled she is used to make um, otherwise no brainer topics, third rail issues for people to want to support because, oh, well, Marjorie Taylor Greene supports that. So I can't support that. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. And they do that a lot. I you mean, know. she's just the loud one. Her it's like they Lauren talked about Bo the Wuhan Bober lab theory recently, right? They said it was, yeah. it was a Trump theory, so we can't cover it. Right. You know? Yeah. Mehdi Hassan so. said that. Well, the conspiracy theories were theorists were talking about, so I couldn't cover it. I, what? People You're should crazy. look up who paid for that research in China. People yes. should look that up, please. Yeah, not I can tell China. you that it was not China. <laughs> and listen, to Thank everybody, you. we talked about at the top, we talked about how they play us on China and Russia. Please hear me on this. Yep. The whole, this was a lab leak in China. That whole thing right now is being disclosed at this juncture because they want to manufacture consent for conflict with uh, China. That is what that is about. Do not fall for it. This is China is not your enemy. Russia is not your enemy. Your enemy is your own leaders. Your enemy is your own government. Those are the people who are screwing everything up for us. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. Straight up. Like it is not China. It is not uh, Russia. Like somebody said, I think it was, oh, one of the Mike Pompeo tweets. He said something about um, how China was such a threat to this country. Listen, China doesn't hold a candle to what my own government is doing to me. Like there, uh -huh. there's no way they can even compare. It's not even close. So do not fall for that I stuff. Mean, they are currently trying to bait you on the lab leak thing, trying to rile up anger and rile up tensions with China. They want you to be mad at China so that they can manufacture consent for a conflict, a direct conflict with yet another nuclear power. Do not fall for it. Don't fall for it. I think Patrick Henningsen, who's another host on this network, also tweeted about that earlier. And I was so glad to see that because that is the absolute truth. Do not fall for that stuff. That is absolute propaganda. They are manipulating your mind yet again. And it's so annoying. Yay. So annoying. Okay. We only have a couple minutes left. <sighs> and I know you have like 584 things to hype. Um, so where can people find you? When are you on INN? What kind of stuff you got coming up? All that good stuff. Yep. 
um, go to IndieNews.network, you know, in that little URL bar you got. Um, you'll be able to find all the links to all the channels we have. Wednesday, we have Jose Vega coming on INN News. Um, so that should be fun. Um, but just otherwise, on the show. Sundays, how do we miss that? Yep. Good dude. We'll, we'll enjoy talking to him. But yeah, and you can follow us at, at Gindy, get, uh, at get Indie News on Twitter. Um, the, the worst, like, mouth puzzle. Um, but yeah, otherwise, IndieNews.network. Um, you can find us there. Um, at Reef Breland on Twitter um, for me directly. Yay. So. I think that's and it. you also do work on Tara stuff anything. too. Is she still doing her podcast? Is yes. Tara still doing her podcast? Yep. Yeah. When is that? Uh, those are normally Fridays. Fridays at okay. That's right. PM Eastern normally. She moved them. Yeah, yeah. So she's working with Iverson now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's that's yeah. cool. I'm glad that Kim hired her. That's that's really cool. Um, I know Tara wanted me to yep. come on her podcast at some point, and then we all got distracted. So I'll need to reach out to her and figure out when we can make that. Ha- I need to get her on this show too. I DM'd her, and then yep. I got distracted because that's what I do. ADHD. Uh, so you know, there mm-hmm. you have it. Um, oh okay, God. so Reef, thanks for being here. It's